That's one thing it is. God's promises are bigger than your problems. Unless you're just looking so much at your problem that your problem's being more magnified than God's promise. See, that, the problems are in words too. A, a problem can come in your life, but we got God's promise and God is real. Amen? He has a word for it, but He's real. And He can take the problem out of your life. Well, we were talking about fixing our focus. And I just want to mention focus means as far as a point of concentrating or concentrating. I'm not talking about concentrating juice. You know, they say concentrated juice where squeeze is not real, you know, or concentrate. But uh, it also means a direct attention. It's where you're putting your attention to. Amen. There's a lot of things that can get our attention. But we want our attention on the right things. Amen. Kind of like Moses, God was getting his attention. He had a burning bush. Amen. So he turned and his attention came to what was going on. But the Lord spoke out of that. Amen. The Lord may put something in your sight to get your attention. And he may want to speak to you through it or about it. Amen. Moses, it was the burning bush. But for other people, you could see something and then it catches your attention. But the Lord wants to speak to you about it or through it to you concerning it, what it is. Amen. So sometimes we could see something and it's getting our attention, but the Lord wants to speak to us about it. That's why we got to be alert you know, and open to the things of God. Amen? Because sometimes we might like, oh, I don't know about that. But he's able to speak to us. Amen? When Moses looked, it was like a burning bush. He never seen that. But when he turned, the Lord saw that he turned. And what happened? The Lord began speaking to him. And that can go even in our own lives. There may be something that we looked at and the Lord began ministering to us. It could be a person. We look, we're just driving by, walking by, and then we see someone, the Lord begins speaking to us about that person, amen? Or what to do for that person, praise God. So he'll speak to us, amen? But he wants to get our attention. He wants to get our focus. It also means, as far as a point of concentration, where it's a point, you know, that's where we fix ourselves to it. Amen. It's where we're, as far as our attention or our alert, we're alerted about something so we can stay focused on it. Amen. So we talked about a few things. We we're talking about as far as when we went to the book of Mark, I believe it was chapter eight. We talked about, you know, Jesus how he fed as far as the 4,000, 5,000. I know I was talking about a million, but it was referring to the wilderness. I'm not talking about exactly there. I'll correct myself. but Because it said a very great crowd. But it, when he, they say 5,000 and the other one was four, they usually counted just the men, but there was more women and children. So it was more than just five, maybe not a million, but... I'm saying it was it was more than just that, but just having a two fish and seven pieces of bread, amen, or a couple loaves, and feeding all that guy was changing their focus, huh? No, oh, yeah, it was, it was a few fish and some loaves, but I'm just saying he was showing them what they're to pay attention and watch and see what God does. But then we, we went down further and we talked about a few things. So we're, we're going to go over a few things here. And I, I just want to get more into as far as fixing our focus. Amen. And here <clears throat> in the book of uh, Second Peter, it talks about in chapter 1. It says in verse 1, and I'm going to read this. It says, Simon Peter, 
a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. It says grace, God's endued power, amen, his favor, his, amen, influence upon our life and peace is as far as completeness, amen, be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of what? Of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's through the knowledge of knowing God and also knowing Jesus. Amen. There, there's three, but they each three has a distinct purpose. Amen. They are one, of course, but you have God, you have the Lord Jesus Christ, and you have the Holy Spirit. They are three persons, but one. Amen. And so understanding this, he says, according as his divine power, ha he hath given unto us all things. See right there, you should underline that because it's saying what he's already done. He's already did this. He's given us all things. Amen. It's us obtaining everything that he's given us. Praise God. So he has given us all things that what? Pertain on the life right now that we live and godliness in how we live. So he's given it. Where is it? It's within us. But it's also to know it is through the knowledge of him. Amen. So how do you begin to understand all these things? It's having the knowledge of him, knowing him. Praise God. Having that relationship with him. Understanding what his word says about who he is, who we are. Praise God. Where, what part we play and who we are in him. Amen. That we're no longer the old person. Praise God. But in him, we are made righteous. Hey, when you say righteous, you're not looking like, what's it called? He's not looking at you as who you used to be. You're made righteous with God in Christ Jesus because in him we're made righteous. Amen. That means righteous is we have a perfect standing with him. He's not looking at you with guilt and shame or all the things you've done wrong. No, -uh. he's looking at you through Jesus that you are made righteous, but it's having a knowing and a knowledge, a revelation of it. Amen. Who has called us unto glory and virtue. And look at this, verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these great and precious promises, he says, you might be partakers of the divine nature, having the escape, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So how do, how do we escape it? We escape it first by, through the knowledge of him, of what he's done for us. Amen. That's why we put a lot of emphasis, but it, it's having our mind renewed. And when we do that, it causes us to escape. It changes our focus about how we look at things. Amen? Where, you know, the whole thing in the beginning where Adam and Eve were in the garden, what happened? Everything was fine to them in the beginning. But when that little slimy serpent came in there, what did he do? He said some things that changed her perception about how she looked at what the tree was like. It was a tree God said, don't touch or don't eat of it. He said all the trees of the garden they could eat. I mean, that's everything. That's like, that's like opposite of what today is. He was saying everything there is yours. You can partake of it. It's all yours. But just this one, one thing, I mean, you have the whole world and it's one thing that's there that he says, just don't eat of that. 
everything else you're fine you could go about and here comes the the slicky snake eh? and he comes and suggests out of the one thing that's where he wants to put their focus or her focus on the tree to change her looking or perception about what God said don't eat that it's okay to eat you know and it, what by him just putting that thought in her mind was opening her eyes to something that she never saw before that way so it changed her focus or her perception or her attention on what God said don't do that she could go ahead and do and obviously Adam was right there with her so he didn't even speak up he just stood there and sat and did nothing you know he was just quiet and just listening what was going on like what's happening here and God understanding this God already told him he blessed him and he said he gave him dominion over what the fowls of the air the what beast of the field he said the fish of the sea and over every creeping thing and over all the dominion of the earth so he had authority over all the animals well the snake came in there and just started talking he could have just grabbed him right there and threw him right out of there but he just sat there and allowed him to just keep talking even to his wife he's just talking talking rather than taking that snake and rebuking her and then what she do she thought it was one to be desirable one to make one wise and to be like God that's what it said well they were already made in the image and likeness of God that's what we are we're made in his image and his likeness and but this changed her whole perception but when they ate of it what ended up happening everything that they were supposed to eat changed now the whole perception changed how they looked at each other changed and everything that fear came in they became ashamed and hid that that's the fallen state but see with God now coming in Christ Jesus we are made righteous with him that's why he said we can boldly come before the throne of grace to attain mercy and find grace in a time of need amen so we can our perception change but we got to know it that now we can come boldly we're not coming there where we're like defeated and where we're afraid and ashamed no that's the old man that's how people who don't know God they're afraid of God they think man he's gonna whip them down that's how they look at it. if he was going to do that Jesus would have did it when he came he would have been putting a whipping on people he would have just came in there hey I'm taking charge and kicking people out and beating people down and all that tell them all oh, you're no good and just leaving sickness and disease no he was going around healing people showing love to people feeding people you know restoring people to show them their redemption is coming there amen and so he was wanting to see change their focus because it was God in the flesh. Amen? And so here he says, we can escape the corruption, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And so he says here in verse 5, he said, beside this, giving all diligence. Well, why don't we put in the... Uh, the passion translation i want you to see this diligence is like steadfastness so he said devote yourself lavishly sublent sublenting your faith with what goodness supplementing ah you, okay there thank you that's why she's here to help supplementing i don't know why it looks weird when i'm looking at it but it's supplementing that's like you know when when you take supplements like vitamins and stuff it's not to take away from the food you ate it's to add to what you're eating what you may be not getting the other nutrients amen like they talk about zinc and uh, vitamin E 
vitamin D, one for your skin, vitamin C, the A, B, C's, all the way to Z's. That's what it is, the whole thing. There, I guess it goes, it goes from A to Z. Yeah. I don't even know if they got one, two, threes in there, but I'm saying it's the whole thing, A to Z. There it goes, A to zinc, okay. So you get those supplements, and those are not to take away, but add to, amen, to what you're already eating in case you're not getting all the nutrients that you're supposed to get. So with our faith, faith is the beginning. Amen. He goes, we are what? Saved by faith through what? His grace. His grace is what he gives to us, not what we can do for everyone, but it's what he's done for us. Amen. So he said, add to your faith with goodness. What's that mean? Well, we're called under good works. And God said every good thing comes from God. And he talks about if we can ask God for any good thing, it says, if evil men know how to give good things unto their children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give good things to them that ask him? So he said, add to your faith. That Actually, the King James says virtue, but here it's saying goodness. So that's a, a form of virtue, you know, of goodness that you get. So he said, you add to it goodness. And then with your goodness, you get add what? Understanding. That, that you get revelation. You comprehend what it is that you have. Amen? And then what does he go on further to say? And then he said, and you add to your, <clears throat> from your understanding, add the strength of self-control. And in other words, even though you get understanding of something, it's good to have control of what you know. Amen? Some people, when they get too much knowledge, they get prideful and boastful, and then they start putting people down. Like, really, we're there to help people. Amen? Just like any type of environment we're in, it, because God gives you more knowledge or you have more knowledge, it says to whom much is given, there's more responsible to it. Amen? So with what we're given, we're able to help others. Not be like, man, get out of here. You don't know nothing. I don't want to hear it. Aren't you supposed to know this? You know all this beyond him. Nah. He wants us to be have self-control over ourselves so we can help others. But that's what we add. It says if a man, he said, if a man can govern his spirit, he's better, he's stronger even than a mighty man that could take a city. A guy can be strong in strength to do things, beat people up, take cities, conquer the world. But if they have no control over themselves, what is that profit? Doesn't mean nothing. Then it'll be like someone that's a dictator. You know, they, they just can control everything, but can't even control themselves. And so he says right here, you add to your self-control. He said patience. Amen. Because patience is endurance. Because all these things are part of the fruit of the Spirit. It's part of, part of growing in the Spirit. Amen. But we add patience, endurance. We, we got to have faith and patience. We inherit the promises. It says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, through faith and patience. Some people don't have patience. They just want to get to you. Man, you could see videos. They're at the drive through They're mad about people not getting served what they want right then. So on. Like if I order something, and I want it well done. Someone wants it rare. Obviously, their meal, meal is going to be done quicker than mine. Because mine, I want mine cooked. I don't want no blood up in there. I, I don't want to sit there eating raw meat. But I'm just saying, I like mine cooked. But if someone wants them a little medium rare, and you ordered before them, obviously, theirs will be done faster than yours. You just have to have patience. Amen? You have to have patience in cooking. If you're making a cake, you don't just snap your finger, it's done. Amen? You got to add ingredients to it. 
and you got to bake it and cook it and it takes time. Any good meal, it takes time. Fast food is fast food, amen? They're frying it, they're just uh, going at it. It's not the healthiest stuff because it doesn't take your time. Really, the healthiest food is the ones that take time to cook, amen? Fast food is just, let's get this done. I watched some of those videos, even in other countries. It's looking good, but they put all that oil and they're just putting the, you know, that uh, flour on there and then they're putting the food on there and then they're adding all this stuff, mayo, they're putting uh, curry, they're putting all this stuff and everything and butter and butter and butter. I'm like, man, if there's more butter, someone's going to end up having an artery problem. I'm like, it's just nonstop, but they're making it fast so it can be done. Not everything fast is always good for you, you know? That's why growing in God, it isn't always a quick, fast thing. Amen? God's a, God takes time with us. Amen? It took time. Look at the little baby. It takes time for her to grow. Some people cherish the time of growing because they don't want their baby growing right up so quick. Oh, what happened? I just like when she was little or whatever. Now she's a grown a grown person and it, I, you know sometimes you cherish the times when someone was small you know you cherish it like puppies they like their little puppy then a the dog gets older and then he starts learning something and then sometimes they just like want to do their own thing they're like ah especially cats man i don't know a little kitten they're nice then when they get older those cats are like ah, i'm doing my thing i don't want to be bothered They'll go their own way. I'm just saying, but every time when there's little one, it's like, oh, you know, you, you want to hold them, take care of them, everything's precious. But you don't forget those things, amen? And so that's growing in the Lord. But growing in them is also learning to refocus. It changes our focus from time to time, amen? From glory to glory, from faith to faith. We're going from strength to strength, amen? So he says right here, he said, from patience, he goes, you add godliness. That's our, that's our walking, you know, our lifestyle of how we living. I mean, it's not saying that you, when a person talking about godliness, that's, that's a, a lifestyle of living. It's not saying, when you're saying someone's holy, we're holy in God. Amen? We're already made holy in the Lord because of his righteousness, you know? But there is a walk that someone should do, amen? We're not walking how we used to walk, amen? But we're growing out of those things into him. He called us unto godliness, amen? And keep going. And then he said to godliness, mercy toward your brothers and sisters and mercy toward others, adding Add unending love. So he said, having mercy. Amen. That's having compassion. We're not so quick to just throw in the towel on them. Amen. Not so quick to judge a brother and sister, but it's showing mercy. God even said to the merciful, he'll be mercy. Amen. Because mercy triumphs over judgment. Amen. It's so easy to judge everything. Amen? But mercy is what triumphs over it because you have compassion about it. I noticed some things. If you've been through a lot in your life and then you see someone else that does wrong, sometimes you have compassion about it. It just depends on what it is. And you have compassion about it that you, you want to show mercy to them to help them out of it. Amen? Not to beat them down about it but to help them out of it, to show them another way. Amen? That's what Jesus was doing when he walked around. He was, all the people that didn't know the Lord, that were living wrong and doing things, he wasn't there condemning them about it. He was showing mercy to let them know, hey, I'm here. I'm here to save you. I'm here to help you. A, a, a fireman doesn't come in a house when it's on fire and starts complaining to the people, listen, what did you do to get yourself in this mess? I should just leave you in this fire. You up there breaking things, causing stuff that you leave the oven on, like doing that, yelling about it rather than saving them. 
And that's what people could get into. And, they, you know, they see something wrong. They Instead of being like, look at this, have to go in this house, put out this fire, what you did. Yeah, why they're in the midst of the fire. You're telling them what they did wrong. Nuh-uh. You snatched them out of the fire to rescue them. Amen? You know, a fireman, he's in an emergency. He's there to rescue him. He ain't there judging him like, hey. Now, later on, after things get done, they can tell him, hey, listen, you know, you let the settlement and the insurance, if it was whatever took place. But at an emergency, you're going in there to go and save them. And that's how we got to do. We got to change our focus at times of what we're there to do. Amen? And so... I think it's making a little noise. So he said, with that, we add to that, it says, brotherly kindness, the end is love. Amen? It says charity. And so that, that that's the main thing. You know, obviously, they say just love is the first part of the fruit of spirit. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, meekness, long-suffering, temperance, and faith. See, they're all there. But it's in our spirit. We have it as a new man. When a person becomes saved, the first thing they get in them, of course, it's Christ, but you have the fruit of the spirit. But fruit takes time to grow. Amen? But how do you grow fruit? I'm asking a question. You water it. Amen? And that's what we're going to see about. You water the fruit that's in your life. And the way you water is through the Word of God. Amen? Because that helps you grow. Praise God. So you water those things in your life. And so here he says in verse 8, For if these things be in you, see, he said, if in you, or since these virtues, oh, that, that's that, that's the, Hold on. So you can edit that on the camera, the video. But it says, since these virtues are already planted, what? Deep within. So they're already there in you because Christ is in you, the hope of glory. They're within you. And you possess them in abundant supply. They're not running out. Amen? God doesn't run out of supply. It's in you. Amen. They will keep you from being inactive or fruitless in what? In your pursuit of knowing Jesus Christ more intimately. So here the Amplified says, For if these things be in you and abound, they shall neither make you that you shall neither be barren nor unproductive in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, you will be active in the things of God. Amen? That is, you'll be active when you're active, you activate the things of the Spirit. Amen? In your life. And look at what he says here. He says right here, but he, but if anyone lacks these things, what's it saying? He's not focused. He's blind. And in other words, he's not seeing right. And consistently or constantly closing his eyes to the mysteries of our faith and forgetting his innocence for his past sins, is that me or that, that have been washed away. So I'm just like teaching something here. I want you to see something. So sometimes to know the right, you got to know what's wrong. Amen? Some people just want to hear the right, but they don't want to hear the wrong. To identify where the wrong is, that's where you can change it and make it right. Amen? Sometimes you learn more by what the wrong is or reading it so you can understand how the right is. Amen? So he says right here, I'll read out of King James, but it says, He that lacketh these things is blind. And in other words, and he cannot see afar off. In other words, he's short-sighted. See, people who could see far-sighted aren't thinking about right just right now. They're thinking about what's ahead. 
Amen? Their, their focus is a bigger picture. Amen? Sometimes we could get so focused on what's there that you're missing the focus, the bigger picture on what's ahead. If people play sports, you know why they play? And they're playing to win that game. But what also are they playing for? To get to the what? Playoffs? To get to the Super Bowl? So the bigger picture isn't just winning the one game. That's taking the steps to get there. But they're looking on the biggest picture because they want to win. You know, get the whole Super Bowl and win it all. That's what they want to do. So that's where you align your focus, not just about, okay, and they do it at jobs. They're like, okay, well, they give you numbers. We know it. They'll tell you this is your daily goal. But then we have, you know, what our whole year is to get. Now, sometimes I could get a person like, whoa, you know, how are we going to even get there? But if you take all the things and you begin to daily look at things, it gets your perception there. Because all it's numbers, some of that. If you can look at the numbers differently, then your goal can look different. You know, you could say, well, if I just do this today, then I can see myself getting there. Amen? Look, look I want you to see something. Because, see, the children of Israel, in Numbers, it was 14. I just want, you know, a lot of us know the story. But I'll, I'll just read it real quick, this part, right here in Numbers uh, 14. It says right here, and this is a time when they Moses sent them out to go check out the land that God's given them. And there was giants in the land. Now that can uh, kind of align people's focus, but they, they got their eyes off of what God said and got their eyes on what they were looking at. Sometimes you got to just look at God's promises are bigger than your problems. Amen? That's one thing it is. God's promises are bigger than your problems. Unless you're just looking so much at your problem that your problem's being more magnified than God's promise. See, that, the problems are in words too. A problem can come in your life, but we got God's promise and God is real. Amen. He has a word for it, but he's real and he can take the problem out of your life. But I want you to see this. When, when the, these men came, they came back to bring back the report of what they were. They were saying, man, the land's beautiful. It's good. It's houses. It, the fruit. It took two people to carry the grapes, the cluster of grapes. It took two people to carry them. That's a, a big cluster of grapes. I mean, here we're buying little grapes this much for what? $2 a pound? They had two guys that have to carry one cluster. You're paying $2 for a little cluster you can carry yourself. This had to be a huge cluster of grapes because giants were eating them. So I think one cluster, probably two, you'd be full. Amen? This, we can eat the whole thing and be done with the pack after we ate it. But here he says, look at this. I want you to see what happened in verse 31. I, I, or, uh, sorry, I want to read in verse 26. And they went, and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel. And it says, it says, unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them. Can you hear me? Uh, we're in Numbers uh, 13, verse 26. And they brought word unto them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. So they brought confirmation, but they also brought back a word. Amen? God will confirm something in your life, but He also has a word for your life. Amen? But see, we're going to see that their confirmation, 
some of them, their word wasn't lining up with the confirmation of what God gave. Their perception changed. And it says, and they told and said, we came unto the land where you sent us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit that we have of it. Man, he was like, man, the, the land is good. And we're supposed to possess this land. This is something God gave us. Nevertheless, here they are changing. Their whole perception changed. He said, nevertheless, the people be are strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, I saw the children of Anak there. The Malachites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea by the coast of Jordan. So they're looking at all these people that are walking around. Now, these weren't little people. When they said giants, they're giants in the land. We're talking people over 10 feet, 12 feet tall, 15 feet, and they're not like small people. Today, you got some tall people but some of them have problems. If they're real tall, you know, they have l little medical things that go on. But these weren't like that. These people were big and strong. But see, God said, I, they went to, he said, go and possess the land. It's yours. I've given it to you. He just whined. But Moses said, send them out. Let's see what God's given us and bring back a word again. And what happened? It said, Caleb stilled the people in other words told them be quiet don't don't be talking like that before moses and said let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it see these guys were young that's why it says in the book of first john chapter 2 the young are strong in the word and they've overcome the wicked one they're like man look at david he was like he went in and he wasn't old he was taking down a bear, taking down a lion. You know, and then Goliath come. All the ones that are grown up are afraid. And David's like, man, who's this uncircumcised Philistine? Let me go ahead and do it. And what, what's the reward? I'll go ahead. I get to marry Saul's daughter. And then I get money and uh, no taxes the whole time for my whole family. So he was like, let me go in and take care of this. He goes, who is this guy? I defeated a bear and a, you know, see, sometimes when you're, you're not afraid, fear has even came into you yet. You're just stepping out doing stuff. Amen. But look at what they said. Caleb wanted to steal the people. And then here they go in verse 31. But the men that went up with them said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. Now, how do they think they're stronger than them? Just because of their size? Size doesn't mean someone's stronger than you. Someone with education doesn't mean they're better than you. Amen? Because if you got God for you, who can be against you? God told them to go possess the land. You see some people, they're, some are million and billionaires, not because of their education. Some they even go to college. But they knew they had knowledge of something to be able to start something, to be able to do something. So it's not saying, oh, I have to necessarily do it this way to obtain something. But if you do it God's way, you will. Amen. I'm talking about the natural way of doing things. I'm not saying you don't go to school or any of these things. I'm just saying some things to overcome things. If you do it God's way, because he gives you the word, you can see yourself through it. You could see yourself overcoming. Amen. I just saw a video. A guy had his little child there. And he was trying to run up the um, ramp, you know, that they do on those ninja warriors at the end. You run up those ramps and when you get it, you climb up. Well, he was going up kind of a high one. He was a little guy and he ran and he climbed. He almost grabbed it and slid back down. He ran, he climbed again, he fell back down. He did it like a couple of times. And then he just put his hand over his face and was like feeling defeated. But you know what his dad, his dad came to him and said, know what? 
you're the best. He said, you're able to say this, you're able to do it. You're able to make it. You're able to go up there and take climb it. He started speaking. He goes, I want you to see it before you go back up there this time and run. I want you to see that you have already made it to the top, that you grabbed it and you got up there and say, I can do it and say, I'm over. I can overcome it. I can, I'm strong and I will take over. And he said, do you see it now? He goes, I see it. He said, go out there and then come, ran. The little boy just ran and then he grabbed a hold of it and he got up there. Why? Because he saw it before he did it. And see, that's not being short-sighted. That's being able to see afar off. <clears throat> you're not being blind because you're seeing within. Sometimes you got to see inside yourself to do something before you do it. That way you know you can overcome it. David said in the book of Psalms 27, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And in other words, he said, I had fainted, I lost heart unless I had believed first within and to see it, not naturally, but see it within that you're what? Well able to go ahead and overcome in the land of the living. That's what you do. You see yourself. You see yourself healed. Even though the, you got a bad report, you got to see it in and think about that I'm healed and look at yourself that you are whole. You got to envision it. If it's at business, you got to see yourself having the business. Amen. You got to see it before you complete it. Amen. That's what it is. A lot of people, they try to do things, but they're not seeing it within. Some of them are trying to step out when they see themselves defeated. And that don't work. You got to see. That's why Caleb was like, he stilled him, said, no, nah, stop. The Lord said, we're well able to possess this land. We can go ahead. I don't care how big or how strong they look. If God told us we can take it, we can. But look at what it says in verse 32 of Numbers. I want you to see something. Because he said, we, we're not able to go against him, verse 30, people, for they are stronger than thee. And they brought up what? An evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel. And so what did verse 33 said? And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight. It didn't say their sight. He said in our own sight. That's how they viewed themselves as what? Grasshoppers. See, they were looking at them. They don't know what they were thinking. They could have been afraid. You remember when they walked in Jericho, it says their heart melted when they came in. Because they already knew what was going to happen. Them, they heard, I guarantee they heard about them coming through the Red Sea and how Pharaoh was defeated. And when they saw them as spies, they searched out the land. If they knew they were coming in there, they would probably grow weak and lost heart. Because they already knew who these people were that came in the wilderness. Even though they were giants, it didn't matter. They, they probably already knew they were defeated if they were coming in the land because they knew these people have someone greater with them than of themselves. And that's why it says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You just got to see it within yourself and not be short-sighted. Amen? To know that there's a greater one in you and you're well able to overcome it. Amen. You're well able to secede. You know, when I was at work, they told us they what they wanted us to get. Now, I didn't see it in the beginning. They told us what's called, they want us to reach 100%. You know, and we bet we're negative. We were negative like whatever, 50. Now, I, they just told us what they wanted us to accomplish. But know what? We began going in there 
and day by day as we began get going to do it, but plus God's with us. Amen? He began adding, and know what? We finished this year, it said we got it to 120. We overcame even what the obstacle was that they never even did before in the store. And we got over 120 on that and with all these other stores. And they were like, you know, they came in, congratulate, but it, I know it was God there with us because wherever you're at, God blesses. Amen? doesn't matter where you work. You got to give it time, but God's there with you. You remember Isaac, he was in the land. He didn't sow at the first time. He allowed his circumstance. He took his wife and he got all scared. But it said later on, after a process of time, he sowed in the land and then he received a hundredfold, even though God said, told him to sow in that, to go in that land and he'll make him fruitful in a famine land, a land where it's drought. It looks like it's impossible. But see, what might be impossible with man is possible with God. So they could talk all the reports they want that's going on in the world. Doesn't mean it affects you because you're not of the world. You're of God. You're of another kingdom. Amen? Just because we're in the state, I don't care what's going on with the other people in the state. I don't belong to them. We belong to one greater and we belong to another kingdom. Our kingdom isn't of this world. Amen? We're in it, but it's not of it. So we come from a different place than the natural place. We come from the supernatural. Amen? It can look like people may be losing jobs, losing money, but we're with God. God takes care of his kids. But we got to learn to see ourselves different than who we were. Amen? That's where we realign our focus. Watch this. He said in verse 9 of Second Peter, this is what we're reading. He said, but he that lacketh these things is blind, cannot see afar off. They're short-sighted and have. See that word? That's past tense. Have forgotten. That's what you don't want to forget. That you were purged from your old sins. Purge means to be cleansed. You've been cleansed from all your old sins. Amen. Whatever you did in the past is the past. That's what it is. You don't have to keep looking back at that. Some people, the enemy tries to bring it up and tell you what your past was. Not -uh. the past has passed away. Amen. And look at this. Look at what it says here. Go to Hebrews chapter one. And then I want to get this. We'll get on a roll here. It says in verse one. God, who at sun-dry times and dying for manners, spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath now in these last days, he already has, spoken unto us by who? Jesus, his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. He appointed him to be over everything and given it to him, by whom also he made the world. So if everyone talking about who Jesus is, man, right here. He made the world. He has everything. I mean, he made it by his word. Who's the word? Jesus. And look at this. Who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself did what? Purged our sins. When did he do it? When he rose from the dead? And then he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. He cleansed us from our sins. Amen? That's why people in the world who don't know God, Jesus forgiven them already of their sins. They just got to believe what he's done for them. Now, for in Christ, it says this, if you did 1 John 1, 9, it says God is just and faithful to forgive us, amen, of what? Our sins and what? To cleanse us from what? All unrighteousness. What is that? He said forgive and cleanse. When you're forgiven, that's one thing you got to know is God forgave you. 
when you confessed it to him, he forgave you. The next thing is to know he cleanses you from it. I don't care if it's a disease or whatever. We heard a testimony about a guy. He had AIDS. He was messing around with men. He grew up in a home. It was, it was on TV the other day. He, he grew up in a home. His dad wasn't around a lot. So he, his thoughts began playing in his mind because his dad would work the whole time and then come home and sleep because he was trying to make a living for the family. So he didn't have attention as a boy. But he started lingering about things. And then he got interested in guys. And then he started pursuing what's called, he believed in God, but he started pursuing homosexual relationship. Well, this was a while back in the 80s or 90s at that time, and HIV was pretty high at that time. So he come to find out, living that perspicuous lifestyle, he ended up uh, getting tested one day, and they took two tests on him, and they found out he was HIV positive. You know, certain things, when you play with things in the world, there's consequences that come with it. Some people think, hey, I can live whatever way I want, and nothing happens. But they, the world don't want to tell you about the other side. They just want to tell you, have fun, do your thing. It's okay, whatever. There's nothing that's going to harm you. But go to the hospital. You talk to the doctors. They'll tell you about all the people that come through this hospital and diseases and stuff. But they don't want to say it on TV. They just want to mirage it, camouflage it, and don't tell you nothing. Well, the guy came back. He had HIV. So he started. he went to church. And this pastor came in, he heard a message that he hadn't heard before like that. And then he said, he, started, he went and started going to his church, and he heard about that part that he forgiven us and cleansed us from all righteousness, and he never knew that. And he said he asked for forgiveness. But see, God just doesn't stop with forgiving where he forgives us. It said he cleansed them from all unrighteousness. And he said when it, he knew that, unrighteousness is where everything that's not of God, because God makes us righteous through Christ Jesus. How does he make it? Because he cleanses us. I don't care what sickness, disease, whatever is going on in your life. If you get that revelation, you're cleansed from all of it. That means that man was asked for forgiveness about his lifestyle. He went to the altar and repented. And what happened? He was cleansed. And he went back to the doctor. He said they couldn't find nothing in his body. It's been 12 years. He has no HIV in his body for his life. Because why? When God forgives, he just doesn't forgive. He forgets and he cleanses you from it. That's the power of his blood. That's the power of his word that you don't have to look at what you used to do because God will cleanse you from all that you did in the past. Amen? That's a powerful thing. I'm going to go real quick with a few things just to show you. It says right here in Hebrews 12, it says here, praise the Lord, glory to God. It says right here, verse 1, Wherefore seeing, that's our focus, we are compassed. See, we got to have our focus. We're, we're not alone. We're compassed about with such great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight that care. Give it to God. The thing that's burdening you down, don't let it keep holding you down. Your problem, it's not yours. Give it to the Lord. Amen? It doesn't have to be your problem. Why make it your problem? Let Him be your answer. Amen? You don't have to hold the problem all the time. Find the answer. It's in Jesus. He has the solution. Amen? And he said, and the sin, which does so easily beset you, get you off the map, get you off the road, get you off the mark. Amen? From focusing. Praise God. It, it takes your focus off of going towards the mark. Amen? It, it gets your focus off of what? The long run. Amen? And he said, what? And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the one that started the work in your life, 
and he's the one that's going to complete it in your life. Amen. He's the one that got you where you're at. He's the one that's going to take you where you need to go. Amen. You don't have to be where you're at today if you can see yourself further than where you are now. Amen. Because Jesus will take you there. Amen. It might not look like it's there yet, but it doesn't matter. You got to see yourself further than where you are. Amen. Because you, you keep looking to him. What? Who for the joy that was set before him, he had patience. He endured the cross. Despising the shame. Don't worry about what people say about you. You got a longer one. They're, they might be short-sighted. You're looking at the, law, the further picture. You're not looking at the, just the now. You're looking at what's ahead. They might look at what's now. Who cares what they're looking at? Amen? God sees you differently. He sees you afar off. Amen? So you got to look and see yourself. It doesn't matter. Forget the shame makers or shame or shame people that want to shame people about whatever. Just keep pressing forward because he sit down at the right hand of God now and he's cheering us on. So I want to just say a few things about what to do to see yourself that way. Amen. I'm going to just share a few points right here. First thing is the study. Amen. It says here in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And he, can you put it in the Amplified? It says study to what? Show yourself approved unto God. Amen. It says what? A workman that need not to be ashamed. That's what Jesus was. He wasn't ashamed about it. He was despising the shame. So he says study and do your best to present yourself to God approved. A workman tested by trial. We're all going to go through tests. But keep your focus when you're taking the test. When you're taking a test in school, you're focused. You're remembering the answers. You go through tests in life, remember the answers in the Word of God for whatever test you're going through. Amen? So you'll pass. Don't allow the circumstances of the life to get your focus off of what God's promise is. Amen? You might be going through a test, but what's God's promise say about that test that you're able to overcome? He's with you. If they, the test is saying you're what? Not, not going to make it through? No, -uh, I'm, I'm going to make it through because God's with me. Amen? If, the te if some test coming, there was a test result saying there's some disease in your body, no, -uh. praise God. It says by his stripes I'm healed. Look at his promise. Amen? You got to focus on the promise more than the problem. And he said what? Who has no reason to be ashamed. Don't be ashamed about it. Amen? Because you're going to be able to testify and give glory to God of what he's done in your life. All you got to do is hold fast. He said, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of God. Look at the next one. It says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11, look at what it says. It says this. 1 Thessalonians, uh, can you... Uh, do it in the King James. Watch this. It says to study, to be quiet. And in other words, that means to strive or to study. To be quiet means what? To be still. Amen? That's what God wants us to do. When you're focusing, when you're studying, it says to what? Be quiet or be still and to do your own business. Don't worry about everyone else's business. Focus on the business God's given you. Jesus said, don't you know I must be about my father's business when he told his mother and father about it? They were worried and all that about him, but he said, don't you know I need to be about my father's business? Focus on your business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. You know, do your work. Prove your own work, it says in the Galatians. Prove your own self whether you be in the faith. Amen? Not someone else. Prove yourself whether you be in the faith. It says in Galatians 6. But you got to prove yourself. Amen? That you're in the faith, that you can stand strong. Praise God. So you study to be quiet, and that means to learn to be still. 
Sometimes, we, I, I mean, everyone, the phone rings, you pick it up. Oh, I was reading the Word. Set aside, set aside time with God. Where I know we got the phone, some things are emergency, but make that time. You got to make it. You got to study to be quiet. You got to make yourself be still. Amen. No one else isn't. Amen. Sometimes with a child, what you do, you rock the child so they can go to sleep. But it's study to be still. And what does it say here? Next verse, uh, Psalms 46, verse 10. What does he say here? I'm waiting. I know it. It says, be still and know that I am God. Amen? Just learn to be still and recognize he's God while you're studying, that he's the Lord. And he said, I will be exalted among the heathen. So those who are trying to shame you, those who are trying to bring you down or your circumstances, God said he'll be exalted in it. Amen. He'll be lifted up in it. And he said he'll be lifted up in the earth. You'll have a testimony. Amen. That's why he just said, be still. You remember he told them to be still as far as when they were going out. He told them first be still. And then he told them to go out and praise him. But he told them without going out and fighting, he just told them to run out there and walk. And he said, be still because the salvation is is going to be of God, amen, of tomorrow. And then he told them, and then they sent out the praise team, and they began praising the Lord. And then what happened? It caused confusion among the enemy. But sometimes we just need to know that he's God while we're studying and re relating on his promise, praise God. The, the next thing is not just studying, it's meditating. you got to see yourself, amen? see yourself to be yourself or whatever, but it's really being him. Amen. It's the one in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Look at here. It's meditating. Meditating means to mutter. It's to think about. Amen. Look at what it says in Psalms 119, 97. It says here. You know, he's pulling up. So 119.97 says this. It says, Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation when? Just some of the day? It says all the day. Find a word, a promise of God, and think on it. Think about it throughout the day. Obviously, you got other things to do and stuff, but think on it because the more you think on it, it becomes part of you. The more you think on it, you can see it within you. That's how you get it. That's what meditating is. It's begin to see yourself in that way. Amen? Seeing yourself healed. Seeing yourself have victory. Seeing yourself achieving what that is you're supposed to achieve in life. Amen? Seeing yourself wherever it's supposed to be, you got to see it. Amen? And so he said, oh, how I love your word, your teachings. It's my meditation all the day. Look at what it says right here. Go to Psalms 104, verse 34. It says this. It says, my meditation of him shall be what? Sweet. And I will be glad in the Lord. Amen. It's not something bitter. See, if you're thinking about things wrong, then it becomes bitter. It can make you bitter. That's why it tells us in Philippians 4, whatever's true, whatever's honest, whatever's just, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's of a good report, think on these things. Meditate on it. Amen? That's what he wants us to do. And we'll be closing in a minute. But he said meditate on these things. That's what he wants us to do is to think on these. Praise God. A good report. David said, I won't be afraid of evil tidings, for my heart is fixed. It's already, I meditated, my heart is fixed. And what? He said, my heart is fixed and I will not be moved. Amen? None of these things move me. And another verse right here, it says right here in Psalms 119, 99. 
it says, I have more understanding than what? All my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. What is it? Even you hear people's testimonies or your own. You could write down what God did for you in your past. He could still do for you today. He said, that's my meditation. That's why it's always look over your past victories and think about what God, God got you through that. He'll get you through whatever you need to get through next time. That's what David did when he went up against Goliath. He said, I defeated a bear. I defeated what? The lion. I, and what happened? That was his meditation. He already knew. I overcame him and them. And what happened? He said, I'm well over, well able to overcome this Goliath too. Amen. And so next verse right here, 49, verse 3. And we'll be closing right in a minute. He said, my mouth shall speak of wisdom and the meditating meditation of my heart shall be of understanding, meaning comprehending what he is. You're speaking of it. As you speak it, you'll begin to see it. That's why it's called meditating. You mutter it. You start hearing yourself speaking his word, but as you're speaking it, you think about it, and you'll begin to see it in your life. Amen? You see yourself overcoming. You see yourself have that place. Amen? And you begin speaking it. That's where faith comes in. You, if you got it in you and you speak it, you'll begin to see it really take place. Amen? And another verse, 1 Timothy 4.15. Look at this. Got one more scripture, I think. He said, meditate upon these things and give yourself wholly to them that your profiting, your benefiting may appear to all. He's saying meditate. Paul was talking about what he was referring to when he wrote Timothy, but that's with us. Meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly, spirit, soul, and body. Amen to it all. And he said, you're, going, you're profiting of you moving forward, of you accomplishing what your goal is, you're, it's going to appear to everyone. All the naysayers, all the shame blamers and all them, you, it's going to appear before them all. And the last verse is here, Proverbs 15, 28. Give you a few scriptures. So you can meditate on those. I hope you, you, know, you can watch the video, write it down again. But this is for you to get it, to have the word. He said, the heart of the righteous studieth to what answer that word studieth it means to meditate amen he meditates to what give the right answer amen so we'll have an answer to speak to the problem amen it says we, we should be always ready amen to have an answer for them that ask of the hope that be that's within us amen if there's a problem coming to you, let us uh, give the answer. Praise God. So let us study, let us meditate. What? To answer, because it says the mouth of the wicked, what do they do? They're, they're meditating on wrong things. It's pouring out evil things. That's why it says a good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth good things. A evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringeth forth evil things. What's evil? You can hear that talk. Yeah, you know what that is. But the good thing is the treasure of God because it says there's oil and treasure to be desired in the book of Proverbs in the midst of the wise. There's there. It's right there. And where is it? It's within you. It's the treasure of God's words, the oil of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Go ahead and play that. We're going to go ahead and pray. Amen? Hallelujah. And I know some of you... You already got encouraged, amen? God gave you a word already this morning, amen? You hold fast to that word because your breakthrough is going to come through, amen? Just hold fast, amen? I, I want to share, I'll share later, but praise God, we have had already something happen, amen? You just speak it, amen? Just tell the Lord, I, I know you're already before me. You're going to go ahead and make that way.
God's waiting for the promise to come out of your mouth. That's how you activate it. Amen? You don't activate God's word by speaking the problem all the time. You speak his promise, and God watches over his word, not ours. He's watching over his word to perform it. He's not watching over our complaining to perform it. He's watching over his word to perform it. Amen? So see yourself victoriously. See yourself having achieved the promise. Amen? Whatever that promise is to you. I don't know everything. I know some things, what people say. But whatever you're believing God for, begin to speak it and see yourself there. Amen? Meditate on His Word. Amen? Because he, he even says His Word, I am the Lord. And what? He teaches us to profit. Amen? So we got to turn our eyes upon Jesus' Word, because He is the Word, so we can realign our focus. Amen? Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank You this morning. We thank You for Your Word, Father God. Oh, Lord, I thank You for each and every person that's watching, and each and every person that's here, that they have the greater one living within them to see themselves victorious, that they're triumphed, Father God, that they're healed in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, that they're loved by you, Father God, that you're not looking at their faults, you're not even finding their faults because you already forgave and forgotten them. You're looking at their future of what your plans are for them, that they may have a promise, an expectation in the latter end, Father God. Oh, hallelujah, I thank you for each and every person that we take this word, Father God, and we're able to hold fast to it and finish even the race that we're running at this present time strong, Father God, holding fast to your promise and enduring to the end, Lord. We thank you and glorify you and bless you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I just want to pray for the people, some of you that are watching us now, who haven't known the Lord before. God has a promise for you. His promise is real and it's eternal. But we never want to leave without just giving someone an opportunity, amen? You might have fell away from the promise. You might have been short-sighted like we talked about, and you've forgotten. You've forgotten what the Lord already did for you. Well, the Lord's calling you back, amen? All you got to do is remember what He's done. Just like the prodigal son, he remembered where he used to live. He, when he came to himself, and if you're coming to yourself today, the Lord wants to call you back home. All you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me all my sins. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior today. And I thank you for making me new. And if you prayed that, the Lord said, He'll be your Lord. He'll be your Savior. He also said He forgives and He cleanses you. I don't care what mistakes you made. I don't care what you did in the past. God, when He forgives you, He cleanses you. He makes you new and whole from all what you've been through. You are clean and washed in His sight. I thank you, Lord, for cleaning and wash you, Lord, by your blood and by your word in the name of Jesus. And if you pray the prayer to the Lord, we want to hear from you. We want to encourage you. And we want to be encouraged to know what the Lord's done in your life. We love you. God loves you. And Jesus is Lord. And we just seal you next week. And you guys have a blessed week. God bless you. Amen.